Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learnt over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And today's just going to be a fairly chilled plant chorsy video. I'm going to finish showing you the plants that I brought home from the plant swap. I've got some very exciting ones to show you. And then, and this is scary, I'm going to be taking you through the process of chopping my Monstera dubia because this is something that I've been putting off for such a long time. I'm going to be doing the chop and extend to propagate her and I'm really nervous about it, but I think it will be exciting as well. So yes, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So I actually chopped my Monstera dubia last night. I did record the process, so I will show you that in a minute. I just, I, I wanted to allow her some time to callus over before I actually started potting her up, just to reduce the risk of rotting. And it was a very scary moment for me. I was in two minds about whether or not to do it. I know I kind of had to do it. I, I talk you through all this when I, when I make the chop, so I'll, I'll let you watch that. And then I will show you what she looks like now and I will talk about what I'm gonna do to her. So I'm currently filming this at 11 o'clock at night. I'm doing it now because I've just been sitting on the sofa procrastinating and I feel like if I don't make the chop now, I'm never gonna do it. I've been saying that I'm gonna do it for, I think getting on for a month now and I'm scared, I keep putting it off, but I set the camera up like this first because I just wanted to, oh, I shut her in the door there. Just wanted to log how huge my Monstera dubia had got and I don't want to chop her like it's a massive part of me that just wants to let her continue to grow but I just know that realistically this spot here which is height wise the only spot that she can fit is not going to offer her enough light to be able to keep producing that beautiful mature growth and I'd like her to reach her full potential so so yeah I think once I've done it I'm going to feel better about it but this is the scary bit so I'm going to take you off the tripod and I'm going to walk you through my thought process and then I'm going to make the chop. I'm going to leave her to callus overnight. I'm also really scared that by leaving her to callus overnight because I know Monstera dubia is so, so, so sensitive. I've also had really bad luck with propagating it in the past. I'm really scared that in the morning she'll just be wilted and dead. But yes, I'm going to take you off the tripod, let you know what I'm thinking and then we can do the scary bit. Okay, so this is this is where she's at. As you can see, the growth up there is just absolutely insane. And she's fully come off the moss pole now as well. And that main section of stem, oh, sorry, <laughs> is actually bending round. So I think, I, I mean, I really just need to do this now or else she's gonna end up in a weird warped shape and I'm not gonna be able to properly train her onto the pole and she's gonna look a little bit funky. So, so yes. I have, I, she is, as I say, really well rooted into the pole. If I turn her around, you can see she's got a fantastic root system in the back, which gives me so much hope. Like I did a chop and extend on my Philodendron Splendid recently. And I would say this one's got more roots than the Splendid and the Splendid is doing well. So I do, I, I, oh, I have faith for this, but I think I'd just be so gutted to lose that top section that I'm just terrified. Also, look at the size of that aerial root. There's another one starting to form there as well. Isn't that crazy? So, so what I'm thinking, I know that realistically from this point here, she's rooted into the pole. I know that that is kind of like secure root and kind of maybe I should chop from there. I did also, when me and Emma first did the moss pole extension, I did also put a little bit of moss behind these aerial roots, um, but I have a feeling that might have just gone straight through them and attached to the plank. So obviously if I do chop her there, then I risk maybe losing that leaf. It might just be a risk that I have to take. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm probably in the grand scheme of things, if I could get a few more roots in there, that would be great. So I think I will probably cut pretty much where the wire is at the bottom. And then I'll see how she's doing. And yeah, then I will just leave the moss pole super hydrated overnight, leave her to callus and tomorrow we can, we can start a brand new plant. Also, I am aware that she's got a new, she's pushing out a new leaf at the moment. And technically a lot of people say that you shouldn't 
chop and propagate a plant or even repot a plant, in fact, when it is pushing out new growth. But the thing is with this plant at the moment, there's, there hasn't been a point where she hasn't been pushing out new growth. Like as this leaf was still hardening off, I could already see the new leaf unfurling. So again, it's a risk that I feel like I've kind of got to take because there's never going to be a good time to do it. But yeah, right. Okay. Decision made. Let's do it. Right. So I've just cleaned my scissors again. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going to do it. I, I know I'm probably making a massive drama out of this and maybe you think I'm being silly, but I'm very attached to this plant. Oh, this is one thick stem. Oh, good luck, girl. Oh, I thought that was going to be a really satisfying chop, but actually, if I want this to be a clean cut, I feel like I might need to get a very sharp knife because, oh, is it going to do it? I don't want it to be a messy cut. Oh my goodness, okay, I'm going to saw her. Okay. Let's try again, shall we? Well, I just lost a leaf, which is a little frustrating, but it's not the end of the world. It's not a fenestrated leaf, but I've made the chop. So, right, scissors again. Dear God, this is so stressful. Um, okay, so that leaf is obviously a goner. I'm just gonna take that bit off. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and take the, the section of moss pole off. I'm just gonna cut the cable tie that me and Emma put around it to secure it. Ooh. And hope that this bit here lifts off relatively easily. I feel like it's quite stuck on the plank and it's really hard to tell whether or not it's actually rooted into that bit of moss. I don't think it has, because obviously it hasn't got very far to go. So I guess I'm just gonna have to kind of gently pull it off. And I mean, at the end of the day, I've cut there now. So if I do lose that section, I will try and propagate it. But it's this top bit that I'm the most concerned about. So, right, let's, let's give this a go. This is the start of my brand new plant. Oh my God, I can't believe I just did that. Uh, the only thing is, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see, but those roots there that were attached to the plank, I don't know if they're gonna do anything. I did kind of really have to break them away. And in fact, if you look at the plank, you can kind of see the remnants of them on there. And I just know the times that I've tried to propagate Monstera Dubia before and I've taken it off the plank. If it hasn't rooted into moss, then it hasn't, it hasn't been successful. So I don't know if I'm going to make, oh, I, kind of, I was going to say make, I'll make the decision in the morning, but I kind of need to make it now if I want it to callous. I wish I was doing this alive because I could really use your advice right now. <laughs> what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to chop it again there. And this leaf here, I'm going to attempt to propagate separately. Just because I feel like if that section doesn't root and I'm relying on that, then that could be bad. And also I'm going to have to pot it quite, like, unless I want to take off that leaf anyway. Yeah, for me, I don't know if that's made any sense what I've just said, but for me, that makes sense. I'm going to chop her again just there. And then this bit here, I know will be okay. So I risk losing this section, but the rest should be fine. So yeah, right, let's make another chop. I'm gonna try with scissors again on this section, just because I feel like I can probably get the scissors round in a way that I couldn't before. There we go. So I've got this little bit. And again, I'll leave that to callus. And it does actually, it's got some nice roots. I don't know how substantial they are and I don't know how well they'll hold up, but they're there. And then I've got this bit, which I'm feeling, don't want to jinx it, but fairly confident with. So 
I'm just gonna go give the moss pole another hydrate so it stays really, really moist overnight. And then we'll come back to it in the morning. Ah! So I think just because I've had such trouble propagating Monstera dubia in the past, I was I was honestly terrified that I was going to wake up this morning and she'd be all wilted. I know it's a little bit different this time because she does have a really good root system in the pole. But this is what she's looking like at the moment. She's so beautiful and I think she's going to make the most stunning big plant. Also, I know last night I was saying that there's a new leaf unfurling. This is the speed at which things happen with this plant. That leaf is now out and it honestly wouldn't surprise me if it was fully unfurled by the end of today because it just moves so quickly, this plant. But yeah, I hydrated the moss pole really well last night so she's absorbing lots of micronutrients from that and I think because of that it should be absolutely fine. I don't want to jinx it but I think... I'll show you, in fact, because I did this with my Philodendron Splendid in one of my videos recently. I'll give you a little update on her quickly, just so you can see how she's doing. So, yeah, this is my Philodendron Splendid that I did the chop and extend on last time. And as you can see, she's doing really, really, really well. And she has also, or she is also just about to give me a beautiful new big leaf. So that's just proof that the chop and extend method does work. I didn't doubt it, but you know, sometimes until you've actually done it yourself, it, it can feel a bit scary when you're potting up a plant that doesn't yet have a root system in the soil. So I think, bearing in mind that this worked so well, it kind of gave me, gave me the guts to chop my dubia. So hopefully I will be back in a month or two's time at saying that it worked really well with this plant as well. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with the moss pole extension. As you can see, the growth at the top here, it's kind of hard to show you because she's very foliagey, um, but it started kind of growing off the moss pole and it's it's gone in a bit of a funny direction and her main stem is very, very thick. It's very solid, as you saw when you saw me trying to chop it last night. And I think I'm going to have to, I think it's going to be quite hard to train her to now grow straight. So I think this might potentially make extending the moss pole a little bit difficult um, but what I've done is I've, I've, I've pre-cut my my metal sheeting this is just the stuff I get from B&Q it seems to work really well I really like using it uh, and then I'm just going to use the plastic back sheeting to create a moss pole extension and I know a lot of you've been asking as well about where I get this from I just get it on Amazon and I will link it down in the description box below because it is just fantastic for these d-shaped moss poles I got this moss pole idea from Emma as well this is not my own invention she makes them and I just think they're wonderful so yeah credit to Emma for introducing me to this style of moss pole uh, but what I think I'm gonna do Oh, I did bring a I did bring a sharpie. I know I'm usually I'm I'm not usually that finicky with my moss poles. I usually just kind of throw them together, and if they don't look perfect, I don't mind. But just I I, I want to get this one right. So what I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna kind of really accurately measure, but I'm just gonna lay the plastic over the existing plastic just so that I can get an idea of where it needs to come to, and then I'm just gonna mark that with a sharpie. Should have taken the lid off first. And then I'm just gonna do that at the bottom as well and then I will fold it down and hopefully that will create the right length that we need. I guess if you're being really good about this, you could use a tape measure or a ruler or something like that. I'm personally not doing that, but if you want the perfect moss pole, that's probably what I would recommend. Okay, I don't know where to put her where she'll be safe. She's, she doesn't really fit on the table because she's so wide. And Yoli is currently asleep in the bedroom, but if she comes through, I feel like havoc would strike. But okay, so those are my two marks at either end. And I'm just gonna try and fold them as straight as I possibly can. And then I can cut along the line. Right, and then I'm gonna cut that section of plastic and then I can punch my holes in it. Oh, and also this is the other section of the Monstera Dubia that I decided to chop last night. I've just put this one into sphagnum moss and I'm hoping that it's gonna take. I, 
th this is the bit that scares me because this bit was attached to the plank and that is often like I don't know why when the roots are detached from something solid that they're growing to like a wooden plank they often just don't do anything they almost just kind of die off and go I was going to say dormant but that like they're kind of not functional once you've removed them from that hence why I think it's a good idea to root it into a pole in fact I was saying to a friend recently if I was to grow Monstera dubia again from scratch I would 100% do it on a moss pole for this reason because it just makes the chop and extend or the chop and propagate whatever you're doing so much easier and it helps the growth to size up nicely as well but yeah so I'm I, I don't think we're out of the woods yet with this cutting but at the moment it hasn't gone floppy and it's usually quite quick to tell you I'm gonna just monitor it over the next few days keep it in my cabinet probably ideal conditions and keep my fingers crossed but yeah for now it's looking okay but right so with this I'm gonna use this as a measuring guide to just mark a few places where I want to make my holes again I don't usually do this but I'm gonna do it this time because this feels like a very special one Okay, and now I'm just going to look at the other one to see how close to the edge, because Emma actually made this one. She came over to my house to do the extension of the plank, I think only a couple of months ago. I mean, the growth, as I say, the growth has been crazy, but I'm just looking to see where she put the holes, because I want to make sure that it vaguely resembles how Emma did it. I was wondering why that was so difficult. I was hole punching upside down. I'm not too worried about the spacing of the holes if that's not exact. I just want to make sure that they're gonna match up evenly on both sides so it doesn't end up lopsided. So I can tell that, I don't know if you can really see on camera, my spacing isn't perfect yet. You can kind of see when it reflects there. I'm not that bothered about that, to be honest. I don't think I'm gonna notice that. Okay, and what I've done is I've just put two holes like very close, just there, like very close to the bottom so that what I can do is I can connect it, so like connect it easier. I'll undo those cable ties and I will feed the cable tie through the new plastic and the existing plastic and the wire as well. And that should just help to hold it together really well. I know I could do a massive, massive moss pole extension, and to be honest, I probably should. I'm just running a little bit low on wires. So I think this one might be a continuous extend, which maybe isn't the best idea. But as usual, I'm working with what I've got. So for now, it's going to be a fairly mini extension. And then I will do another one in the future, in the very near future. So I'm just going to cable tie one side to start with and leave the bottom holes free so that I can tie them on when it gets to actually putting the pole together, if that makes sense. You'll see what I mean when I get to it. I don't know. I never think I'm very good at explaining things like this. It's easier if I show you. So for now, I'm just doing one side. And with some moss poles, I would say it's worth putting like a cane or something up the back just to support them a little bit, because obviously when the plant gets bigger, the weight of the plant can mean that the poles are quite susceptible to kind of bending and breakage. But that's why I really like using the metal sheeting, because it is like it has a bit of bend to it, but it is fairly robust. It doesn't bend easily, so it does hold its shape really well. Ideally, I would be using the stuff that's plastic coated, but... I, again, I've never had issues doing it with this stuff. I don't mind the look of it. I know some people aren't that keen on it, but I don't mind. And I want it all to match in. So for this plant, it's going to be a very wiry pull. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to do what I usually do. I think I'll probably work as I go. I'll kind of stuff the moss in as I go. And I might not go all the way up for now just because... The plant obviously doesn't need the top section of moss before. It's pointless keeping that hydrated if it doesn't need to be there yet. And then I can just kind of fill it as I go. I also am a little bit low on moss. I thought I had loads. I've got, I've got about maybe a quarter of a bag left. And 
it's just because of the plant swab. I completely forgot how much moss was needed to kind of wrap everything. And uh, yeah, I've suddenly got a bit low, so I need to get some more of that. I know I've said it so many times before, but I just love Soil Ninja's moss so much. It's so beautifully pinky. Uh, and also at the plant swap, I think I briefly mentioned it in my plant swap video, but they had a talk on sustainability there and Soil Ninja were there as well. And one of the things that I think a lot of us probably don't think about is where moss comes from and how important it is to make sure that it's sustainably sourced and Soil Ninja's is. But Again, like I know I've, I've said before, I've kind of picked up cheap stuff from B&Q. And to be honest, I, I still do that occasionally if I can't get hold of moss. But really, it's something that I shouldn't be doing, we shouldn't be doing. I'm going to be a lot more conscious of that in the future because the environmental cost of that, if we were all to be doing that all the time, is really, really huge. And it's something that I wasn't as aware of, so should have been. I'm obviously very aware of peat when it comes to substrates, but... But moss is one that I don't think is, is spoken about as much. So, so yeah, definitely making sure you know where your moss is coming from, that it is sustainably sourced. As I say, I'm going to be much more aware of where I'm getting mine from. Uh, but yeah, also this stuff is just fantastic. At the, at the last plant swap, the one six, seven months ago, uh, they had a microscope there. Ian from Liquid Gold Leaf brought a microscope so that you could kind of put certain plant leaves under the microscope and see what was going on. And we put some of Soil Ninja's moss under there and you could see loads of little beneficial insects. And it was just amazing. I mean, they're, they're so teeny tiny microscopic, you can't see them to the naked eye, but they're just all the natural, lovely things that your plants, your plants really enjoy. They're usually killed off through sterilization and it's just, it's a really lovely thing to be incorporating into your plant care. So it's good to see firsthand that it hasn't been treated with anything nasty. And it's also just so pretty, as I say, like that just looks gorgeous and pinky. Not as much on camera actually, in person it looks super pinky. But yeah, right, okay. Okay, we're getting to the scary bit. I mean, all of this is scary, but we're getting to the bit where I'm gonna have to try and very carefully bend the main stem to make this work. And I hope it does work. Right, okay, for the time being, or just for now, at least until I've done other things with moss that I need to in this video, I'm not gonna fill it any more than that, because as I say, it doesn't need it doesn't need to at the moment it would be pointless doing that and now is time okay i'm going to just trim the cable ties off and then it will be time to do the extension ah. right so i'm just gonna start this is gonna be ooh, slightly hard to show you on camera but i'm gonna start by just taking off the cable ties that are currently at the top of this pole so that I can feed feed it all in and join it together. Put the camera down a little bit more actually so hopefully you can see better what I'm doing. I'm so wary of this new leaf as well. It's so fragile and every time I put the plant down it bends and I don't want to break it. So finicky. In fact, I might need to get another pair of scissors because I pulled them very tight and it's hard to get in there. There we go. Okay, so this, as I say, is going to be slightly more difficult than it would usually be just because of how the top of the plant's growing because it needs to really be a lot more upright. Uh, and I'm going to have to put a bit of gentle pressure on it in order to make this work, I think. There we go, I think. Oh, I've just had to try and slide the metal over. Oh, come on, this is so finicky. Yes, yeah, slide the metal sheeting from the new moss pole over the old moss pole so that it slots together without damaging the aerial roots that are there and now in theory 
people tying it together should just secure the whole thing. Now, the only thing is that at the moment, because that section of growth at the top is really pushing on the moss pole extension, you can see it's almost pushing that bit over. So I know I said about running a cane or something up the back. Ideally, that would be in the moss pole. I'm just trying to think if there's anything I could do to just straighten it out for the time being. I think what I'm going to do is just put a couple of other cable ties on the front kind of going across the grid to hold this bit together and if it's a little bit wonky at first it's not the worst thing in the world in fact it's not even bad at all I don't know what I'm saying it's not the worst thing in the world it's fine I think the plant will straighten up once it's on this pole so hopefully this will just be an issue for a week or two and if for any reason it's not then I can put my thinking cap on and come up with something else, but I think this should be fine. Okay, so it's still definitely not perfectly straight, but I think, as I say, this is an issue that I can rectify as the plant continues to grow. So for the time being, it's going to do its job. That is the most important thing. Uh, and I'm just going to now take out some of the moss from the bottom of the pole and try and just reveal some of the roots so that I can make sure that there's not going to be any moss in the soil because obviously that can lead to root rots. So I'm just going to get out as much as I can and then we can pot it up. It's funny actually how thin the aerial roots of Monstera dubia tends to be. I just think of like Monstera deliciosa and their aerial roots are so chunky similar to that one there but the majority of these are almost like, I mean, kind of similar to the Philodendron Splendid. They're quite spindly, they're quite small. I'm just thinking if I can bring some of them out of the moss pole, get the moss off them and encourage them downwards, then at least it will have a little bit of root in the soil. I did toy with the idea of putting this one in pond as well, but I feel like I'm just kind of getting reacquainted with pond and it's, it feels too risky at this stage. I also don't know how, I don't think I've ever grown a Monstera in Pon. Have any of you? I'm sure it does amazing things, but yeah, I don't think, I don't think this is the time to be trialing things. I just want this to go right and I want it to turn into the most beautiful, beautiful big plant. Okay, so I feel like I should figure out what pot I'm going to use for this plant and then I will have a better idea of how much more moss I need to take out because I've taken out about that much at the moment. You can see there's a teeny tiny little root system there. And yeah, I don't want to go overboard because it's quite a tedious job. I don't want to go overboard if I don't have to. I mean, if I go with this pot, it's literally the perfect level. So I think I might do that. I am just a little bit concerned about the stability of this moss pole to the point that I'm almost tempted to tie a bit of bamboo or something to the back of it. Or even cable tie, mm, cable tie a bit to the front of it for the time being. That feels like it might be a good option. And I think I'm going to do it. Okay, this is going to be a very makeshift option. <laughs> and I don't think it's going to look particularly pretty, but I don't mind. I'm just going to do it. For the sake of the plant, I'm just literally thinking of putting two bits of bamboo. I might not even need to. Maybe just one onto the moss pole and cable tying them down so it helps it to stay upright. I don't see any harm in doing that. I can remove them once the plant has straightened out. And I think in the meantime, it should help to keep it upright and stable. <laughs> okay, yeah, immediately I can feel that this is so much more solid. I know, as I say, it's going to look a little bit weird, but I would much rather that than the plant fall over or potentially snap or anything like that. So just figuring out whether or not I'm going to do it on the other side as well or if I'm just going to do one side. 
I think I'm just going to do the one side. <laughs> I know it looks very silly. Okay, right. Now that that is done, the faffing about is done, I'm going to... I'm going to pot it up. I'm going to start by just putting, I've got some lovely soil ninja monstera philodendron mix. I'm going to start by just filling some of that at the bottom of the moss pole. Uh, and then, yeah, I will pot it up and I'm going to have to find a fairly heavy pot, I think, to put this in because it is going to be pretty dense. standing up right by itself. I totally thought it was just going to topple over when I let it go. That's good. Oh, I wonder if that would fit in that pot actually. If this pot fits in, that would be perfect. Oh, oh my god, that's literally the most perfect fit. Okay, she's done. She's potted up and on her new journey. <laughs> I'm so excited to see how that plant grows now because she's, I mean, as you can see, she's really starting to kind of seriously fenestrate. She, to the point that for me, she doesn't even look recognisable as what I would think of as a dubia anymore because I always very much think of dubia as a shingling plant. And oh my God, I'm so excited to see now what that section of growth does. So I will 100% keep you updated on her because yeah, I'm so proud of her. Okay, I will... Since they give her a water after this video, I don't actually know if there's much point in watering the soil yet because, as I say, there's not a big root system in there. But I'll just make sure over the coming weeks, months, to keep her moss pole really hydrated. Hope it straightens itself out a little bit. In fact, I could actually just put a little bit of soil down the back and that would help to keep it nice and straight. Yeah, there we go. That's a little bit better. Yeah, I think that looks absolutely fine. So yeah, hopefully next time you see her, she'll be looking even more glorious and fingers crossed this works well. I have faith in the method, so I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. But yeah, we'll wait and see now, we'll just wait and see. But right, I'm just gonna have a small clear up and then I will take you through the plants that I got at the plant swap and do a little bit of stuff to them that needs doing as well. Yehudi's just popped in to say hello and has knocked Quite a few plants over in the process. Hello, girl. Oh, yeah, thank you. What? <laughs> Don't pour <call> me. <laughs> She's doing her hungry face. She has had breakfast. No. What? Yoli. <laughs> okay, it looks like Yoli's here to stay, so I'm just gonna carry on and hope that she gets the message. Um, but so, what have I already shown you? Uh, so the things that I got at the plants that I haven't shown you, I got an another Alocasia cucolata, and apparently this one is uh, is I think it was a lemon lime. I ah, it is reverted Alocasia cucolata lemon lime variegata. So yeah, I'm thinking that I'm probably going to pop this one up. Oh, now she's having a drink. I'm going to pop this one up with the one that I got from Gavin Green. Uh, and this one is, it's actually, I can see it's very well, well rooted in pond at the moment. And as I've already spoken about, I'm getting slightly braver with certain types of plants in pond. So I'm kind of thinking I might transfer this one to pond as well and grow them together in pond. Um, so yeah, that's my thoughts on that one. Uh, and then this one, this is a, a Hoya pausiflora pal, pal, or something like that but it's a really gorgeous hoya it's one that I don't have and I google pictures of this one and its flowers are absolutely amazing you know the way that hoya flowers usually kind of come in beautiful I hate the word clumps but like clumps of flowers there must be a nicer way of saying that beautiful round balls of flowers <laughs> these ones seem to just kind of come in individually and their flowers look like they could be absolutely huge so I'm really, really excited about that. It's one, as I say, that I don't currently have in my collection. I love Hoyas. I'm always looking to add more to my home. 
And then here I've got a little mystery plant and I picked this one up from the free table. There were there, there were some people towards the end of the day that were just putting things on this table of stuff that they didn't want to take home. And I have absolutely no idea what it is. So if anybody could tell me, I'd be very grateful, but it's just a really cool texture. And this is one that I kind of went back and forth of, do I, do I need it? Do I need it? Do I need any plants? Yes. Uh, but do do I really want it? And then the more I looked at it, I just I was like, it's got a lot of character. Yuli, just trying to eat the plants. It's got a lot of character. I feel like it could grow really nicely. Um, but yeah, if any of you, maybe, if any of you could give me an accurate idea on that, I would be very very grateful. And then this one was very kindly given to me. It's a it's a string of hearts, and the pot it's in. The lovely woman I got it from decorated it and I think it is just beautiful. I absolutely love it. Yeah, it just it made it it made it really, really special and I absolutely adore that. And I haven't currently have I got string of hearts in my collection? I've got cuttings, but I haven't got a full plant. So I'm thinking I could pot them up together. I get a lovely full one going. But yeah, I just thought that was absolutely adorable and yeah. Thank you. Honestly, everybody at the plant swap, I, I know I said it in, in the previous video, but everybody was just so lovely, so kind, so generous. I it, I find these things sometimes a little, like a bit overwhelming because everybody is just, everybody is just so nice. And sometimes being in a big group of people in itself can be a little bit overwhelming. And obviously it makes it easier if everyone's lovely, but when there are so love, so many lovely people and so many plants, I've said it before. I kind of go into overload a little bit. So it was, it was the most wonderful day. But yeah, it was just, it was a lot to take in. But I'm, I'm so, so grateful. So yeah, thank you to everybody that was very kind and lovely when I was there. Um, <laughs> and then this is another Ace Cananthus, and this one I don't know how well you're going to be able to tell on camera. But how cool is that? It's kind of iridescent. It's green, but it's also very purpley. It's um, an Ace Cananthus. Oh, it's just a, a variegated lipstick plant. Ace Cananthus radicans variegata. Uh, see, because my Ace Cananthus melmorata is also, the Black Pagoda is also just known as the variegated lipstick plant. There's so many different varieties of Ace Cananthus, but... Yeah, this one I just thought was gorgeous. And I can see that it has got really nice roots in there as well. I've got a few in bags and they all seem to have pretty nice roots, which is quite nice. Although I do enjoy rooting stuff myself. It is just quite nice when it's kind of done and you can just be like, right, what's the plan for the plant now? So yeah, I'm excited about that one. The beefy calancho I've already spoken about. I'm definitely going to be, in fact, I can feel it's a little bit floppy as well. I'm definitely going to be doing doing some chopping of that in this video because I want to get that going. I'm super excited about that one. And then this one's Diddy and gorgeous. This came from my friend Lottie. This is a teeny tiny variegated bear paw. And I've got the normal bear paw cactus and I think it's beautiful, but the variegated one is just so sweet. So yeah, I think it's got the tiniest root system in the world. Uh, so that's going to have to go into a very, very little pot. And that will probably take me about two seconds to do. So I will definitely get that done today. And then this one, I, I can't remember. I think I was just so swept away with when everything was happening at the plant swap. I can't remember exactly what the lovely guy that I got it from said it was. I think it's an Anthurium pendens. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's very similar looks wise at the moment, leaf structurally to kind of the Coraceum, maybe a little bit thinner, but I love the pendens. I've got a very, very small one in my collection currently, but yeah, I mean, strappy Anthuriums, they just do it for me. They, they blow my mind. They make me very happy. So I'm super excited about that one. And it is rooted by the looks of it. Oh, is it rooted? Or am I imagining that? Well, maybe it's not rooted, but it has got a little growth point. So yeah, that would be one to get into moss. I probably would say moss. Yeah, I think my instinct would be to go with moss, but I'm gonna get that one going straight away because it's stunning. Oh, and then these ones in the box, oh, is there more than one in the box, in fact? So this is a philodendron 
bipennifolium, bipennifolium, um, commonly known as the Jerry Horn. Uh, and I know that because it's very nicely written on the box. Everything was so beautifully displayed at this guy's plant swappy station. It was so incredibly organised. And yeah, by the looks of it. Oh, in fact, I think these are alocasia corms. That's exciting. Um, I, I actually have vaguely remember putting them in the box. Did I put them in the box? Honestly, that it, everything's just kind of a blur. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm losing my mind or not. Maybe I am. Um, but yeah, this is the Jerry, what did I just say? It was Jerry Horn philodendron. And how beautiful is that? So yeah, it's currently unrooted. So I'm going to, again, get that one probably into moss. Moss is kind of my default for philodendron. Um, and the little corms as well. I will do something with them. That's very exciting. I mean, they're properly, they're properly rooting. So yeah, that's really cool. I have no idea what type of alocasia they are. Uh, so we will find out. Um, and then this, again, I picked this one up off the free table at the very end. This is just, it says common wet sticks and philodendron mandiet mandaya oh god men mandaya <laughs> what's going on mandianum that's what it says mandianum i think is what it is and i did go there's not a lot to show at the moment as well it's literally just wet sticks uh, but i did google this one and the mandianum is a philodendron that i don't think i mean i, I, I haven't heard of before i might have encountered it before but i to my knowledge i haven't and it looks very much, I'll try and find a picture and put it on the screen, but it looks very much like, I was going to say silver sword leaf shape, not like, not quite. You know how the mature silver sword kind of has that very specific form to it. it I, I guess kind of structurally, to me anyway, I thought pink princess cross silver sword, but it's got quite dark green, almost kind of purpley-ish foliage. So yeah, I'm going to stick that in my prop box along with the other mystery wet sticks that kind of look like epipremnum to me. It wouldn't surprise me if they were. It says common wet sticks, but I guess they could be they could be anything. So yeah, those are all going into my propagation box. Oh, and I thought I had more on the floor, but maybe I don't. Um, and this is another one that, again, wasn't a swap. This was very kindly given to me but this is one that I'm really excited about it's still in the cup at the moment but this is an alocasia platinum and I've never had a platinum before I've seen pictures of them they look incredible oh my goodness that leaf that leaf is just gorgeous oh and it's got another one as well it's got a baby leaf oh I don't know how well the camera's gonna pick this up oh yeah can you see that isn't that just stunning? That is so incredibly beautiful. I'm so excited about this one. And it looks at the moment just to be in soil and then it's got some pond at the bottom. Um, the cup doesn't have any drainage and I don't know if it's been grown like this, but I, gu I guess in theory, you could just have a little water reservoir at the bottom of the pond and it would work in a similar way. Although, Although then I'd be worried about rotting with alocasia because obviously soil's an organic matter and that could lead to rotting. I don't know. I might I might just leave this one. As I say, some of the ones that are already potted, if they seem happy, like the one that I showed you in yes, uh, the video that I filmed yesterday, um, the alocasia sinuata, I'm going to give that a week or so to just adjust before I do anything to it. And I kind of feel like I might do the same for that one. But that's beautiful. I mean, just look at those leaves. I think those are two of the most beautiful alocasia leaves I've ever seen. I just love alocasia, I really do. I always feel like I, I do have quite a few in my collection, but they're one that I would like to expand on. I just adore them. I think they are the most beautiful plants and I feel so lucky to have come away with them. So yes, uh, what else haven't I shown you? Um, oh, okay, so there's just two more i think i don't think i'm missing anything i took everything out of the box and it's it seems to have kind of ended up all over the place but um this one is so it's obviously a, a variety of ivy it's a senecio mar 
can't read. <laughs> Macroglossus. Uh, and that's what it looks like. It's very, very pretty. However, I'm a little bit scared by this one because I haven't had the best luck with growing ivy indoors. I have currently got a cutting that is propagating and it seems to be doing well, but that's a cutting from the mother plant that I lost. And I'm really hoping, I'm, I'm guessing this one has been rooted and grown in a home environment. So I'm hoping that I'm going to have better luck with this one because it's got such gorgeous variegation. And the shape of its leaves as well, they're almost like little triangles. They're quite different to a lot of common ivies that you see. So yeah, I'm really excited about it. I'm scared to mess with it too much. I think what I'll probably do is just take it in the soil that it's already in. I can't actually see any roots, but I'm not gonna mess with it too much and maybe just transfer that straight to another pot uh, because it frightens me. <laughs> But then the last one, I think, is a Peperomia hovaria, and it might not look like much, but I cannot even explain how soft this is. I know I'm rubbing it on my face. I always rub soft things on my top lip. I don't know why, but it is like velvet. It is so incredibly soft, and I love Peperomia so much, and this is one that this is one that I've never owned before. I think it's gorgeous. It's got kind of like it's almost got a bluey tinge to it. So yeah, I'm I'm really excited about this one. And I can also see that it has got some lovely roots as well, which is nice because I know you can just plant peperomia kind of as it's been done and it will root, but I have lost peperomia in the past doing it that way. My default is now leaf propagation most of the time, kind of chopping sections of the leaf, and I wouldn't have wanted to chop this up, so I'm really happy that it's been done for me. But yeah, so I think the first one that I'm going to start with, just because it seems like the most desperate, is the Alocasia Capria Red Secret that Ross got at the plant swap. This one, I'm not sure if it's rooted, and if it is, I think it needs hydration very, very quickly. This is quite a sensitive plant. Oh, yeah. OK, so it's got the start of some very little roots. I don't know how well you can tell. I have to kind of put it against my jump or something there. If you look just there, you can see it's got very, very little ones, but it's it's very juvenile and needs to be definitely propped further. It goes without saying. So I'm just going to pop it into a cup of sphagnum moss and then I'll probably keep it in my cabinet. I've got my other Capria Red Secret in the cabinet and it seems really happy in there. I actually find with this type of plant, I don't know what it is with the Capria Red Secret and I don't know if any of you have had the same thing, but whenever I transfer it to soil, things start to go wrong. I lost my first Alocasia Capria Red Secret maybe about a year ago now and it was doing really well in moss I thought right okay it's got a great root system let's put it in soil let's see what happens and it literally within a matter of weeks it rotted and I hadn't over watered it I felt like I'd done all the right things but it just turned to mush and so the one that I've got in my cabinet now is still in moss and it's been in moss for quite a long time longer than it should have been and I know technically, in theory, you can just keep alocasia in moss, but I think because they're very, very rooty when they get going, even if you have to change out the moss at some point, which inevitably you will have to do, it can be very, very difficult to actually get them out without damaging the roots. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's one that's kind of, it's definitely a challenge plant for me, and I do think it's lovely, but... But yeah, I'm actually, as I again said in the last video, I think I'm tempted to pot this one up once it's rooted with the other ones. And seeing as Ross loves it, I'll probably give it to him. I will see how he gets on with the other plants first. He's, I mean, like not to be patronising or horrible, but just because obviously it is quite a difficult plant. I've, I've had plants for a very long time and I find it quite a struggle plant. Potentially even growing it semi-hydroponically. Again, pon, maybe that's the way forward. I think I will play about and find something that works here in my space for me. And then once I've found a balance that I think is is good, then I'll say to him, we can go to his house. Obviously, he can take it sooner if he wants to, but I just want to give the plant the best chance. Uh, but yeah, that's how it's going to stay for the time being. And 
then, oh, okay, right, I'm just going to give my scissors a rinse because I want to pot this up and get this going because I'm really excited about that one. Okay, so I am thinking I would like to try this one in a couple of different ways. I'm aware that it's very succulenty and it's probably going to prop best in soil, but I'd also just like to try some in moss as well. <coughs> oh, hello, you. Oh my God, she's on one today. What? Oh, don't you? She's going to try and put through this way. Okay. That's not the best idea. Okay, yes, I I want to try some moss as well, just because I'm going to take a few cuttings and I'd like to just play about and see see what works best. So I was actually thinking, I've got this box, this Tupperware box here. I'm aware that it's a plant that probably isn't going to require a huge amount of humidity. Um, again, I will obviously do my research into it, but I'm assuming that it probably won't. But I'm just going to, Yuli, okay. Okay, she's got her toy. We're back again. <laughs> um, but I think I might use this as a container and then I can do maybe half soil and half sphagnum moss in here. Is that a bad idea? Because I think initially at first I'd probably just be misting to water. I think that could work quite well. So I'm just going to take the little alocasia corms out. Very intrigued about those. Um, and I've got a box down here where I'm just pouring soil and substrates that I can either reuse or moss that I can boil and reuse. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to just do a box, half moss, half soil and see what happens. I've got some soil here that's got some kind of sandy grit already mixed in, which I think is going to be perfect for this plant. So I think I'm just going to do a half and half. I don't usually do it this way and it might be a bad idea, but I, I think it could work okay. I think it could work. So we're going to give it a go. And then I'll probably, assuming that assuming that this isn't a plant that needs humidity or a cabinet environment, I only say that it's not because obviously it's a calancho and I, they typically don't need very high levels of humidity. But I'm probably going to put it under my grow lights in my bedroom. I've actually set up a little... I keep changing my grow shelf around in there and I will do kind of like an updated tour on it at some point, but I've kind of turned it into like prop box, seed germination, just like a, a whole little fun area that's not maybe the nicest to look at. So I, I don't have it in here, but I've got it through there in a contained space. And it looks very scientific at the moment. And I did, <laughs> I did start a little while ago thinking about playing around with tissue culture a bit. And I'm, I was thinking about how I could create a kind of sterile space for that and I think that shelf might be the answer. I'd obviously have to seal it in some way and create the right conditions but that's a potential thought of mine too just because I find tissue culture so fascinating and I've watched so much on it and I've done so much research into it and it's something that I'm just really intrigued by and I would love to give a go. I'm definitely not by any means an expert or a scientist or anything like that but why not try so how many shall i do i think i'm going to do four cuts just because then i can do two in moss and two in soil and I'm wondering, should I let it callous over? But with other succulents, like when I propagate jade from leaf cuttings and stuff like that, I literally stick them straight into soil. So I'm I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to do what my gut's telling me and I'm just going to put it straight in there. I'm so excited about this one. This is one that, I, I as I said, I've just never seen before. And I love that about the plant swap. I love how you can come across things that are just so weird and random and like you might never encounter in, in the real world. So yeah, I'm very intrigued to see what this one does. Okay, so yeah, that's that's what it's looking like. Half soil, half moss. As I say to water, I think I'm just gonna be kind of spritzing the soil. So I'm not worried about like ridiculously drenching that side of soil and then the moss getting sodden because I know this doesn't have drainage. I might change it out if I feel like it's not working or yeah, if something's not going as it should be, but 
I quite enjoy experimenting like this and potentially getting it wrong, but I I think I think these stand a chance. So I will keep you updated with them and I'll let you know what happens in a few weeks' time. Maybe there'll be some roots. In fact, is there anything like Paparomia? I mean, they can actually be very fast to root. I don't know. I will monitor them and I'll let you know when there's anything exciting going on with them. Uh, but then, oh, OK, I need to come back to the, uh, what's this one called? The Hoya AH7, I'll put the name on the screen. It's got a very weird name, um, but I just thought this was the most beautiful Hoya cutting. And I'm going to pot this one straight into soil. I know I was very scared about doing that before. I would always do Hoya propagation in moss, but it roots so well in soil. So that's what I'm going to do. And then it will mean that I won't have to repot it again, which is nice. I'm actually assuming this is unrooted. I don't actually know. Okay, so it is unrooted, but it's got the tiniest, tiniest little like diddy bit of root just there. So I think if I was to pot this up, it hasn't got many other aerial roots on the main vine. That's the only thing. And I don't want to take those leaves off. So I think I'm going to have to rely on that one little root, monitor the plants, keep it hydrated and see what happens. I feel like I feel like I'll know pretty quickly with Hoya because they, as I say, they're so quick, usually two root. If it's not looking happy in a week's time or so, then I will rethink and potentially change things up. But for the time being, I'm going to do it this way. Right, this is going to be very, very easy. <laughs> yeah, done. <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited about that one. I can see some new growth starting to come through as well. So oh, I, I'm almost tempted to say that I, again, I know I, know I said with the um, Mandula pothos cuttings and the Marble Queen that I might pot them together. This is one that I would consider potting with the Wilbur Graves, I think, just because it's, it, I mean, it looks very, very similar. The Wilbur Graves has got slightly, slightly rounder leaves. And as I said before, these ones are more kind of long and pubicalyxy. But I might consider potting them together. We'll see. We'll see how we get on. But what else really needs doing? These, I think the Philodendron Jerry Horn, I think I'll probably do in moss. In fact, I could use the cut that this was in before. This is one that I do actually need to Google. I don't think I've Googled this one yet. I just love seeing what like the potential of the plant, what it could look like. Also, I've realised I'm really off centre. I don't know if Yoli knocked the tripod accidentally. Um, but yeah. There we go. Uh, I might cabinet this one. I'm not sure. Or maybe I'll put it in my prop cabinet through in my bedroom. But yeah, again, I'll put a picture on the screen. I'll have a look after this video and I'll put a picture on the screen of what this plant could look like. Because yeah, I'm excited about it. I've got so many philodendron. I love philodendron. They are just the most fantastic plants. And this one looks like a very, very hardy one as well, which I like. So yeah, it's almost, in fact, if you imagine that leaf to kind of go in a little bit more, it's almost quite similar to the, 69, the code 69686, obviously minus the big lobey bits. But yeah, I can see similarities in that and the yopii actually. Yes, we'll see how that one does. Um, and then there was another thing that I wanted to do. What was the other thing? I need to hydrate the begonia looking glass because it is very floppy usually or in fact it's got a leaf that I think could come off yeah um usually with begonia I would prop in moss but I just know how much of a nightmare they are to get out of moss because their roots are so spindly and I don't fancy doing that again my in fact my book my begonia thurstonia is in my cabinet and it's been in moss for about eight months and I don't even know how I'm going to begin getting it out of that. So 
per probably perlite or just water for the time being would be best for this one. As I say, I think we'll probably put it into a terrarium of some sort because I think it's a beautiful terrarium plant and begonias just thrive in that kind of environment. So I think that's probably the long term plan. For now, I think I will just stick it in some water because that will at least help it to stay hydrated, stay nice and perky. Uh, and then the other ones. Oh, I know what I was going to do. I know what I was going to do. I was going to get the mystery anthurium that I suspect to be an anthurium pendens into moss. Yeah, it's got a lovely new growth point there. And I could absolutely pop this up with my little one as well. Part of me is, I'm not going to chop this lovely big long leaf, but it does kind of look like it's on its way out, if you know what I mean. It's very shriveled and it's going a little bit yellow, but it can stay for the time being. I'm just going to, again, put this in. In fact, I'll reuse the moss that it was already in. I don't think I've ever rooted anthurium in this way. I can see it has got, I mean, obviously there's a node there and it has got a little aerial root there as well. So I'm assuming, I mean, I'm sure there's no reason why it couldn't be done, but I've never done it this way. So it's a first for me. That's a very small cup for a very long leaf, but I'm really excited to see what this one does. And to be honest, I'm excited for all of them. Oh, I know what it was I was going to do. I knew there was something else I was going to do. I am going to, oh, where can I put this where it's going to be secure? I'm going to put the alocasias together. I have given this one a really good pest check. It looks absolutely fine. I know it's always a risk, but it's a risk that I'm willing to take. So... That's what I'm going to do. Um, and I brought a big box. In fact, the box that I took to the plant swap. And it's just beneath me. And I've been putting all of my stuff in there. And I'm going to empty the soil into the soily corner in there. So that, again, it can be all composted or reused. I don't usually tend to reuse soil for house plants. I know I have been asked that before. But this is, um, this is the coir substrate that I got from Gavin Green. And... I know that they have a very thorough sterilization process. I'm pretty sure this was only potted up quite recently because we saw lots of the plants of about this size going in. And it seems such a shame to waste it if I could potentially use it for something else. So, I mean, even even like coir propagation or something like that, you can see it's got some nice roots. And hopefully, because the soil isn't too damp, this should just fall away quite nicely because you want to try and get as much of the soil off as possible if you're transferring a plant to pond and it would be lovely not to have to go and rinse these roots off. Oh, that's another one I can see grown from a plug plant and I'm not sure if it's got netting on there but it's got a really tight root ball in the middle. Like you look at the roots and then you look in there. Can you see on camera? Yeah. Often, often that's because there is netting or something that's stopping the other roots from kind of branching out as much. But that does mean that if I can untangle them, then this plant will hopefully start to grow even better for me because it's very, it's very kind of constrained with what it can take in when it's kept in such a tight knot. So yeah, I'm just trying to detangle as much as I can. Oh, there's a little corm in here as well. I have actually just snapped it off by accident so that can go into the mystery corn pile and I will grow it or plant it up at the same time as I plant up the other ones. Fairly intrigued about them. Okay I've got I would say 99% of the soil off those roots and I feel more than happy to go ahead and put that in pond now. So where's the other one? It's right in front of me. So because this one's obviously been on a journey fairly recently. I'm saying been on a journey a lot today. I don't know why. <laughs> it's been to the plant swap. It's been carted back with me. I don't want to mess with its roots too much just because obviously it is still going to be adjusting to its new environment. So what I think I'll probably do is I will pop this one 
as well as I can within the pond it's already in into its new pot and then just kind of top up with the other plants around it. Or in fact, I probably will do that the other way around just because in terms of putting this one in first, because this one's obviously got a much beefier, well-established root system and potting it slightly lower down will mean that the other one isn't overwhelmed. So I think that is what I'm going to do. These report and chat videos are great because I can literally just voice everything out loud that would usually be going through my head. What pot size am I thinking? I think I probably could go back in with the same pot size as before. I think that would probably work all right. It didn't feel particularly root bound. So yeah, I think, I think I'm going to use the same pot it was in before. And I'm just going to put a little bit of pond at the bottom of the pot to start with. And you absolutely can use a wick system for pond. I know some people swear by that and I haven't been using the wick system. I just, I previously have and I haven't got on that well with pond in the past. This time I've literally just been creating a water reservoir and letting it feed that way. And I've got on really well doing it that way. So I'm not going to change that now. I'm just going to keep going as I'm going and hope that these ones also do well in that way. How can I do this carefully? Ooh, there we go. Oh wow, the roots are amazing. Look at them. They're way bigger than I thought they were going to be, which is very good news. Oh, immediately that just makes the whole plant look so much fuller. Yay. Oh, that looks gorgeous. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Amazing. What I think I'll do is I'll probably still, I need to obviously go and give that pot a rinse out, but I'll probably still keep it in the ceramic pot. And then this, this is how I've been doing pond recently. And as I say, it seems to be working. I know you can get little measuring dials and things like that and self-watering pots, but I've just been creating a water reservoir of maybe like for this plant, like, I don't know, a couple of centimetres. And then every time it goes below that, I'll just check it and I'll fill it up again. And that seems to have been doing the trick. So that's what I'm going to continue to do. But yeah, I think that's that's pretty much everything I wanted to get through in this video. As I say, I've got the little ones in bags, but all it's only a case of just putting them into a pot because they are already rooted. But I will absolutely keep you updated with everything and let you know how it goes. I will do regular updates on my Monstera Dubia because I'm scared about that one. Uh, but yeah, I'm super excited for all of these and I am excited to show you I was about to say their journey again. What's wrong with me? Why? Where did this word journey come from? Why is that in my brain? I don't know. Um, but yes, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you were doing plant stuff along with it, then I really hope you got a lot done as well. Um, but yes, if you did enjoy it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.